Good morning to all our viewers. I take this opportunity to welcome you to another Pastor's Corner. We have a very, very interesting topic today, very interesting and relevant topic. And so, before we go further, I invite you to bow your heads with us as we pray. Dear Eternal Father and God, we thank you for your goodness and your love towards us. We thank you, O oh God, that we can use this platform to propagate your gospel and the truth of your words. We ask, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit will grant us wisdom, grant us understanding, and even those who are viewing and listening at this time, that you will also grant them the understanding that they need so that they can know, come to know you, whom to know is life eternal. So take charge and control now, we pray, to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we have a very interesting topic this morning. And uh, I know that you will really enjoy listening to um, us today as we present the topic, COVID-19 and the mark of the beast. We are hearing a lot of this, a lot, and uh, many persons think that uh, the COVID-19 virus, you know, is the mark of the beast, or it will lead to the mark of the beast. So we are here today to bring some clarity on this subject, and I hope and pray that as you view, as you listen, that you will benefit and it will help to clear up some of the misconceptions um, that are around us um, and what we, based on what we hear. So today I have two wonderful gentlemen here with me, and I'm going to give them the opportunity to introduce themselves and uh, say which district they oversee. Well, my name is Jerome Gordon. I am a pastor in the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, and I currently pastor in the beautiful, salubrious climes of the south of the island, where we have world-renowned beaches like the Grand Dance Beach. So for those who are watching, plan to make Grenada a vacation spot. <laughs> good morning. Thank you, Pastor Guillermo, and good morning, viewers and listeners. Um, I'm Enoch Isaac, Pastor Isaac, um, who serves as the Ministry or Secretary of the Grenada Conference. I also pastor two churches, that is the Seventh-day Adventist Church at Subiz and at Mung Fan. Um, and we are here this morning, delighted again to share God's word with you. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Today, we have this very important topic that we want to bring to you, as I said before. And uh, I am your host. I'm your host, Pastor Edward Guillaume. Now, <coughs> we want to begin with the questions. And uh, I must say that those two wonderful gentlemen that you are seeing here, they are not doctors. They are pastors. And so there's a question that I want to pose at this time. But before doing so, I just want to say that we are living in covid times. And uh, as we look at the statistics, it's rising every day. When I last checked just a while ago, the number of cases for COVID-19 was somewhere 59,699,426. I believe by now that figure would have changed. The number of deaths, that's globally, it's 1,405,329. Again, I believe that figure would have changed by now. And the number of persons recovered, you don't hear much about that, but the number of persons recovered is 41,294,232. So I want to pose the first question to uh, the panelists at this time. What is COVID-19? What is your understanding 
of COVID-19. Thank you, Pastor Guillaume. I'm, I'm happy that you said at the beginning that we are not doctors. Yes, I'm happy that you said that, and uh, without understanding and having the viewers know that, I, I am then happy to respond. <laughs> Pastor God is saying it here. Well, um, of course, once there is life, <laughs> once there is life, there is hope. But um, my response, Pastor Gia, would be um, COVID-19 is a disease um, caused by a new strain of um, coronavirus. Yes, it's a disease caused by a new strain, um, as it was previously called. Before it was known as COVID-19, it was called the novel coronavirus, meaning new. Um, I probably just want to even give further details. CO um, stands for Corona, V I virus, D is for disease, and 19 is for the year 2019. So it's a, it's a new disease um, which came into our world uh, to a notice in 2019. I'm quite sure Pastor Gordon um, has further details he want to share with us um, about COVID-19. Oh, when it just came, folks were saying coronavirus is new, but coronavirus really is not new. Uh, in fact, coronavirus exists naturally in a lot of animal species. Bats, for example, if you're a species, there are over 400 types of coronavirus in bats. But the one we're dealing with um, is, uh, the, is a novel form of coronavirus. Um, it's abbreviated SARS-CoV-2. And as Pastor Enoch said, we... In 2019, we saw this new strain, codename COVID-19. And that's the one that has been devastating our little planet, our little global village right now. So I'm happy to hear that you are saying that it is a virus that is no pandemic, meaning that it is spread all over the world. So if you are not infected, you are affected in one way or the other. Um, there are persons who are saying that it is a biological warfare. And still, uh, the topic that we are discussing now, there are persons who are saying they believe that it is a mark of the beast or it will lead to the mark of the beast. Um, there are some other little facts that, um, regarding the virus that I just want to highlight is that it is highly communicable. And uh, that's why, as pastors, we are encouraging you to ensure that you protect yourself and uh, you wear your mask, you ensure that you sanitize, you wash your hands, you know, and you do what is necessary to stay safe. It is symptomatic as well as asymptomatic. So there are persons who might be walking around among us who may not show any signs of the virus and they may well be infected. So we need to ensure that we protect ourselves. And then it is diagnosed by a PCR test. So um, it's available here in Grenada and even in other parts of the world. And uh, so far, so far, there is no approved vaccine as yet. All right. So these are some facts that I just want you to bear in mind as we move along. So my second question to the panelists is, um, was COVID-19 prophesied as a biblical prophecy? And if that's the case, please explain your answer. Well, I don't think that um, we can actually find that level of um, disease specificity in the prophecy. Um, we don't have HIV in the prophecy. We don't have um, um, syphilis in the prophecy. We don't have uh, Ebola in the prophecy. Therefore, we don't have uh, coronavirus. But we do have um, the, the prophecy that in the last days, there would be a series of natural disasters and unsettling social phenomena. And among them would be the proliferation of diseases, pestilences. And um, my colleague panelists will take you further down that road. Well, of course, similarly, I would say um, no, um, not directly. So there is no passage of scripture we can turn to, and you'll find um, that the Bible predicting in 2019 and which or, or, um, 2020 or whatever other year it is that you would find this disease named COVID-19. Yes. But 
but the Bible does um, prophesy um, a number of, of, of things relative to disease and infectious disease. So in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 7, I would like to share that scripture. Matthew 24, 7. For nations shall rise against nations and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Um, so the Bible does prophesy that um, in the last days, which I believe we are actually living in the last days, we shall have a, a series of um, these um, um, famines, um, earthquakes, pestilences, and, uh, and coronavirus, or COVID-19, um, falls in that um, category of a pestilence. A pestilence is a contagious, infectious epidemic that is devastating. And clearly, um, I don't think it'll be any doubt anyone would argue the fact that COVID-19 is devastating. It's past epidemic. It is pandemic because it's, it's worldwide. And it, it's devastating. You just give the facts, um, past, um, Pastor Guillaume. Over 59 million persons um, um, been infected. Over um, 1.4 million persons die. So obviously, you had over 41 million recovered. Well, they recovered because they were infected. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's widespread and it's, um, it's, 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 it's dangerous. It's contagious. So while the Bible didn't predict, it, but it falls within the general predictions of the Bible. Yes. So this is Pastor's Corner. If you have just joined us, we are discussing the topic COVID-19 and the mark of the beast. Feel free to share the link, and uh, you can share your questions, your comments, and I'm um, certain that the panelists will be able to answer or respond to your questions and uh, comments. My third question to you, gentlemen. We have noticed that since the turn of the last century, we have seen a troubling rise of natural disasters and uh, pandemics. But we can see here pestilences as well. Are these just mere consequences of man's social decadence or his abuse of the environment or the fulfilling of prophecy. So we have seen um, SARS, we have seen MERS, we have seen Chigvi, Ebola. we have seen Ebola, we have seen Zika, and we can continue to name. Yeah? So the question is, is it a mere consequence of man's social decadence of his abuse of the environment or is it a fulfillment or fulfilling of prophecy? Well, I like the way how the question is structured because it gives us um, an opportunity to, um, to open it up and, 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 and show that all of these factors contribute to our present situation. It is undeniable, it's incontrovertible that abuse of the environment uh, has a deleterious effect on our, our life and the quality of our lives. <coughs> Excuse me. We know, for example, that when you, when you destroy um, the ecosystem and there's habitat destruction, you have uh, you know, the wildlife population, they're in trouble, you have all kinds of things happen, the rise of ve vectors, serious vectors, uh, when the ozone layer is depleted. So yes, man's um, action on the environment uh, is a contributing factor to the proliferation of diseases and pathogens that we have seen since the turn of the last century. And I believe that these things uh, are significant in the context of the coronavirus. Um, the social decadence, of course, uh, that too, um, man has become quite reckless. He has abdicated all moral restraints and is now living like an animal, um, generally speaking. Yes, these things contribute. But um, is it just, it's, is it going to happen because the Bible says so? I kind of think, Pastor Isaac and uh, my um, the moderator, that Bible prophecy is more descriptive <laughs> than causative. So because of God's foreknowledge, he saw that these things would happen. Not that God engineered them to happen, but he saw that they would happen. So in a sense, all the factors can be considered. Sure, and I, um, I would, of course, agree with Pastor Gordon. Um, God, God knows the future. 
That's the game. He is for knowledge. Yes. So when God is not, it's not man saying something and hope it comes true. God says what will happen. Um, but of course, as human beings, we are contributing in part, in large part, to the destruction of our own society. Um, um, or, you know, uncontrollable deforestation. You know, um, the drilling for um, the term, in, in fact, that term in, in the U.S. election was um, quite pro pronounced, fracking. That is, um, you know, drilling and infusing, um, you know, um, a liquid, a combination of water and sand and chemicals into the, the, the cracks in the rock to uh, um, open it up so that we can extract oil and gas. Um, we believe, scientists believe, ge um, geologists believe that that eventually destroys, I mean, interfere with the plates in the earth and, you know, results in, in um, earthquakes and that, that kind of things. The emission, the carbon emission from our factories and all of this. Um, in fact, it was said during, uh, during the time of COVID and the lockdown in many of the uh, major cities of the world, we had a reduction because the factories stopped work for a little while and that kind of thing. The vehicles on the road. So we, we, contrib every day, uh, we are contributing to um, the destruction of the society. But someone may argue, Pastor Guillaume, well, suppose we stop do all of these things. Um, would, would, they, would, 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 as Pastor Gordon seek to explain, would we still have, uh, or can, can, can we stop the Bible's prophecy from fulfilling by refraining from destroying, you know, someone would say, may argue that. But as Pastor Gordon said, God already know what we will do. And he indicated that um, clearly. So the, God cannot be taken by surprise. Man cannot surprise God by the actions, by, by man saying, okay, we would not do this, and therefore God's prediction would not come true. There cannot be a scenario like this. God says what is going to happen, and it will happen. Um, it's like Jesus and his crucifixion. The Son of Man you know, came to, be, um, to die a certain death. It's just one to the man who actually did. But it was going to happen because God knew it was going to happen. Yes? Well said, gentlemen. Well said. We have some of our viewers with us, and we want to welcome you in a special way. I'm seeing Veronica Samuel. She said, after reading Revelation, COVID-19 is no surprise to me. Nancy Hamilton, welcome. She's saying, amen, brother. Glenda Nicholas, she is asking us to read Matthew 24 and verse 19. Doris Hay, welcome. Um, she's asking a very critical question, should we as Seventh-day Adventists accept the vaccine since the COVID-19 is said to be linked to the Sunday law? This is a question that we'll answer shortly. Um, with Glenda Nicholas, I would have already, she says the abuse of the environment is the cause of the diseases in the planet today. So she's actually endorsing what you just mentioned. And then we have Tessima Kendra Alexander. Um, she's saying, oh, yes, oh, yes. So she's, she's with us. Okay. She's with us. So my next question to you is, what is the mark of the beast? And uh, does the coronavirus relate to it in any way? Um, let me just say here that we have noticed that there have been a lot of disruptions because of COVID-19. So we saw the closure of schools and churches. We saw, you know, the um, stay at home. We were, we were encouraged to stay at home. And the stock market decreased by 30% during that time. We saw cancellation of many events, even international, some of our international events, shortages of supplies. And we saw rules and regulations. Well, we call them protocol. So because of all of this, um, what is the mark of the beast and does the coronavirus relate in any way to it? And again, because of the, the disruptions of um, COVID-19 um, that surrounds worship, is there a legitimate connection? Okay, I, um, I, I want to begin my response, Pastor Guillaume, by stating as preachers, we, we preach um, under that subject, the mark of the beast. And um, in any of our evangelistic meetings, 
Um, that would be just not linking the coronavirus or any such thing to it, but it would probably take um, 50, 60 minutes to, to, um, to talk and describe um, this, this, this subject, the mark of the beast um, or the seal of God, you know? Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm saying that in, in this setting, it, we would take much more time if we should give the, the, you know, the build up as to the mark of the beast. But I think it's, it's still important for us to share. It's a topical issue. And I want to begin by sharing um, a portion of scripture. It, it's Revelation 14, 9 and 10. I want to read from the word of God. It says, and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hands, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lord. So, Revelation 14, 9 and 10 um, is indicating to us um, a scenario there that, which tells me, Pastor Guillaume, that the mark of the beast <laughs> doesn't have to do with vaccine. The mark of the beast seems to have to do something with worship. And, and, and one paying allegiance to uh, some form of authority, um, superior power, some power, yes? Because the Bible says, if any man worship the beast, so it's worship. It's not if any man accept a vaccine. It says, if any man worship the beast or his image, that means you're paying allegiance to, you gi you're giving credence to, that person will receive the mark. And, and if, if that's the case, then God, that person will receive, or who, whosoever received the mark, shall receive the wrath of God, the anger of God. So it means, it is clearly saying to me, Pastor, that the mark of the beast is something contrary to the kingdom of God. Yes? The mark of the beast entails that. So I would further say, um, um, before Pastor God responds, that the, when it says beast here, it is not literal. It is not the mark of a lion, the mark of a tiger, or a goat, or a sheep or donkey it, it, it refers to a power yes revelation is prophetic and um, like the book of daniel as well so when we study the book of revelation or daniel because if it, because of its prophetic nature we have to interpret or get the correct interpretations for these symbols the symbolic so beast in revelation refers to uh, is symbolic and therefore refers to a power a, a, a kingdom so um it's a mark of that authority, the mark of that kingdom. Uh, Paul, I'm quite sure Pastor Gordon has some more um, he would like to share. Well, I, I want to build on what you said, Pastor Isaac. The, the mark of the beast. What is a beast? I know the term beast is zoological in nature. Is okay, should I look from the animal kingdom? But as you rightly pointed out in Bible prophecy, particularly Daniel 7, verses 17 and 23, clearly states that a beast represents uh, a system, a political system, or a nation, or a kingdom. So when it talks about the mark of the beast, it is the mark of a system. And uh, based on what Pastor Guillaume and Pastor Isaac said before, is that it involves worship. And the text Pastor Isaac quoted, which is God's, uh, God's uh, um, declaration that whoever receives the mark of the beast will be punished. And so it shows, when you put it all together, that we're looking at an entity, a system that will influence the passing of religious laws uh, that will interfere with how people worship. And as a result of that, um, God is going to be displeased. So the mark of the beast, uh, prophetically speaking, and we don't have the time to fully unpack it, but it has to do with a, a, a pseudo system, a false system of worship that will be uh, brought to bear upon the world through legislation, and it's going to be a counterfeit Sabbath, and of course, like we said, we have got the time to fully unpack it, but the mark of the beast is coming, the mark of the kingdom, the religious political entity that will pass a law requiring all to worship a certain way. We saw that in microcosm in the book of Daniel chapter 3, where the state passed a religious law that was in contravention of the law of God. 
Well, if you unpack Daniel 3, you get a picture of what it's going to be like in the last days with religious laws uh, pointing out how you should worship, and in this case, contrary to the word of the Lord. So in what way does that relate to COVID-19? Well, in the sense that the whole COVID-19 mm -hmm. pandemic has created some structures, uh, some social structures, uh, where the law dictates how you can behave and what time you can go to worship and so on. So in that sense, we see a similarity of a structure that's going to come in the end of time that is being developed now. But to say the COVID-19 in and of itself is the mark of the beast, the, the answer to that is no. Wonderful. And I, I, I further want to add, Pastor Guillaume, you know, um, as I said, we don't have the time to elucidate all the points, but the mark of the beast is, is really rebellion against God. Yes, the system, any, the system that has set up, you know, a counterfeit. Yes? So, so what has God set up? And if it surrounds worship, you know, um, what has God set up? God has set up his commandments, and one of it, um, that is, of course, the commandments, we can find them in Exodus chapter 20, um, you know, verses 3 to 17. But the fourth of this commandment talks about worship. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Yes, that, that's essentially, um, that, that's the one that really talks about worship. I and mean, of course, um, you know, we talk about God, recognizing God, um, commandment one and two, even up to three. But the fourth one talks about the worship of mankind to the creator. Um, but so any system, religious or otherwise, any system that set up any, any authority that set up anything in con contravention to this, that is, the Sabbath day of worship, yes? Any system that set up any other uh, modus operandi of, of worship, many, any, way, any other way of worship, any other type of worship, any other day of worship, that would be giving credence to the mark of the beast because you, 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 you'll be in a allegiance together with um, some group that is going against God. Yes? So, um, again, stressing the mark of the base surrounds worship. It surrounds a false system of worship not set up by God. Um, so today we can, we can look what systems, maybe if I should say, what system that has been set up that is against God. God says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Clearly, the majority of the Christian world, Pastor Guillaume, as I said, we don't have all the time for that, but the majority of the Christian world clearly does not give credence to that, the worship of God on his holy day. Um, a counterfeit is set up. That is the first day of the week. Most of Christianity worships on the first day of the week. And that is not God-given. That is not Bible. A system, yes, as, as Pastor Gordon said, um, um, religious political system that has set up that and most of the Christian world has been bowing down to that system. Um, so this is the, the, if you understand, this is the road for which the, the discussion begins relative to the mark of the beast or someone walking down a road that God does not establish. Yeah, so we, we're not saying, as Pastor Gordon said, anyone has the mark of the beast now because the Bible clearly indicates um, something has to happen, you know, where, where it is it will be mandated. Right now we are free. If people wa want to worship on Saturday, um, they can do it. If they want to worship on Sunday, if they want to worship on, on Wednesday or Friday. But, but when the time comes for, um, when it is mandated that you do this, meaning it is a direct rule against the rule of God. Right now people are free. Yes, but when it comes to the point when it is directly against God, God says Saturday, and we're saying Sunday, or we are saying Monday, or, or we are saying Tuesday, then the mankind has to then choose. And the Bible is saying when it comes to that, those who choose that, that any command that is against God will be paying homage to the mark of the beast, paying homage to the mark of that system, that system of authority. And if I may add, Pastor Enoch, there is... Um a growing number of people are saying that the the mark of the beast is a chip. The mark of the beast is the vaccine because the vaccine contains uh, 
um, or is purported to contain luciferase. Um, and they're saying, wow, you see, the mark of the beast is the coronavirus vaccine or it is a chip. Or we, from scriptures, we cannot give credence to any such thing. As was clearly pointed out, the mark of the beast has to do with worship and worshiping and worship in a way that is enforced by law, which is contrary to God's Ten Commandments. We have here Geraldine Noel, who is supporting what Pastor Gordon just mentioned. She says, I have done a number of research on the vaccination, which is called luciferase. It has fetal matter and animal enzymes. I will not be bowing down to luciferase vaccine. Jesus all the way. <laughs> I'm laughing, Pastor, because just the name, the, Lu the name luciferase in, in, in biblical circles has a certain connotation. But it's harmless in, 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 in pharmacology. It's just simply an enzyme that can cause the, the cell to glow. So it, it's purely harmless in pharmacology. But in biblical circles, the name luciferase, you know, gives a certain connotation. I just want to welcome Rox. Um, says, greetings from Washington, D.C., and uh, she's saying amen, Pastor Isaac. Nancy Hamilton, check Romans chapter 1, verse 12 and 14. Um, Iria Elibox, she says, I'm watching from Barbados. It's good to have Barbados in the house. And she's wishing us a blessed day. Then Glenda Nicholas, worshiping power. Gladlin Williams, amen. Glenda Nicholas, she's saying yes, she's supporting. We have Metro PCS from Louisiana, uh, Louisa Hafford, Pastor Isaac, well said. And uh, we have some other comments there, but we just want to take a break. At this time, we're going to take a break, and we're going to have a special song that will be done by the Isaac family. Gentlemen, may have your attention. I want to introduce to you here in this corner of the good and the right stands a champion robed in white. His eye exceeds the heavens. His way outweighs the world. His reach reaches everywhere. His age is evermore. He is higher than the highest, greater than the great. No one could ever take his crown away. He's more mighty than the mightiest. He reigns from above. He is the all time undisputed, undefeated champion of love. He left his hometown. To enter this arena, to raise his hand in victory for me. An angry crowd crucified the king who wore a crown and gladly watched the champions go down. For I will never count a mouse. For I'm a witness of the day he chose to retain the title, Champions of Love. He is higher than the highest, greater than the great. No one could ever take his crown away. 
He's more mighty than the mightiest. He reigns from above. He is higher than the highest, greater than the great. No one could ever take his crown away. He is more mighty than the mightiest. He reigns from above. He is the all-time undisputed, undefeated champion. The all-time undisputed, undefeated champion. The all-time undisputed, undefeated champion. Of love, of love. I want to thank the Isaac family for this wonderful rendition. We know that. God is always the undisputed champion of the world. No one can challenge him because he's always God. And so I want to thank Pastor Isaac's wife and his two daughters for singing that special song for us. Welcome back. And, uh, we are discussing here COVID-19 and the mark of the beast. You know, earlier, um, Pastor Isaac and Pastor Gordon, you mentioned something that uh, you said that the Bible uses symbols. Um, what I like about the Bible is that whenever the Bible uses a symbol, it interprets it. So the Bible is it's, its own interpreter. And there are some persons who don't read Revelation and Daniel because they cannot understand these symbols. But the Bible is always its own interpreter. And that's what I like about the Bible. So the Bible never leaves us in the dark. So to continue our discussion here, we want to talk a little about the vaccines. And uh, there's a question here that I want to pose to Pastor Enoch and Pastor Gordon. There are some who say that along with the proposed COVID-19 vaccines, we saw a question alluding to that earlier by one of our viewers, are some issues that could be of prophetic implications. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I would, um, <coughs> I would begin by saying that I believe Pastor Gordon has a, you know, quite an interesting um, response to that, but I want to begin my response with a, a trend of thought that is out there, um, which suggests, as you talk about the vaccine passage here, that, that the Bible and many, many of our evangelical friends have been purporting that kind of um, thinking, which in a sense, I believe, constitute nothing more than a conspiracy theory. There are many, there are, there are many of them, all, right? <laughs> there are numerous, Pastor. Um, and um, while I say yes, but I'm very careful, yes, I'm very careful as to um, giving credence to these theories. For example, um, one pastoral couple, Miguel and Maria Paula, Arazola said this, behind the compulsory vaccine, there is a chip called ID 2020 made by Bill Gates. The aim, according to Garcia, would be to create a global registry of all those who have been inoculated, registering them via the microchip. That, and that's the point I'm coming to, Pastor. They say that is the beginning of the platform of the Antichrist. How he will bring about the mark of the beast through the vaccine and will result in you not being able to get a passport, not being able to travel, not have a license, not be able to buy or sell, um, 
And upon that reason, they're saying that one should refuse the vaccine. No, I'm saying if there are reasons to refuse the vaccine based upon the, the health concerns, based upon the effectiveness of the vaccine, then that is, that is fine. One can refuse it. But there is no basis for if one wants to refuse the vaccine, thinking that the acceptance of the, the, acceptance of the vaccine or the, uh, the Bible that has been predicted in the Bible, um, the mark of the beast being predicted in, in Revelation, and one accepting the vaccine, there is this link, the vaccine. If you accept the vaccine, um, that is prophetic. And, and in a sense, that would lead you to get the mark of the beast. You would not be able to travel. You would not be able to buy or sell. You would not be able to do many things. I am saying that may be the case. You may not be able to travel. Right now, travel is, is um, the coronavirus is there. And travel, you have a certain restriction on travel. Um, when we in our lockdown, we couldn't go out and buy and sell as we could. But the, I'm saying that had nothing to do with the vaccine. We, I may have a good reason not to accept the vaccine, but not on the basis of any religious or biblical connections, um, prophetic connections um, to the mark of the beast. And so pastors and clergy persons who are proposing that, um, that is false. That is diabolic. That is not true. I repeat, that is false. That is diabolic. The, the, the Bible doesn't have, there's no connection with the mark of the beast with a vaccine. I'm saying there, there could be good reason not to um, accept the vaccine, but that has nothing to do with um, um, the Bible and, 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 it's, and the, Bible, the, Bi the Bible speaking about the, the mark of the beast. That, that's the point I want to um, drive home. Absolutely, Pastor. And I just want to preface my comment by saying that um, irrespective of what is being said out there, as Seventh-day Adventists, we have a responsibility mm -hmm. to, be, to use social media responsibly. We are not supposed to be engaged in the, um, the whole proliferation of conspiracy theories, but we must speak only that which is factual and that which can be um, supported by science and, of course, the spirit of prophecy, revelation. Uh, the, the question, as it is presented to us now, I would like to say that... Um, with along with the proposed COVID-19 vaccine, what issues that are there that are pro potentially prophetic in nature? To me, the only commonality that I see is during the, the, the mark of the beast crisis, we're going to see a lot of state control. We're going to see um, religious laws that will restrict freedom. Folks are not going to be able to worship the way they want to according to the dictates of their own conscience because the system will prescribe a certain way that worship is supposed to be done contrary to the Ten Commandments or more specifically the Fourth Commandment. So purely in terms of the structure, we see a similarity in that the COVID-19 vaccine as it is being rolled out, we already noticed that Denmark voted unanimously that it's mandatory for every citizen to take the vaccine. Now, the question that raises is, what about those persons who may have an issue, a philosophical or religious issue, or even health issue with that? What about their constitutional right to freedom? Well, the government says, sorry, but as long as vaccine is out, you must take it. Now, that type of overbearing state control where the state arrogates to itself powers that limit the freedom of the individual citizens. That is the element of commonality between the mark of the beast crisis and what is likely to happen should states use that heavy-handed approach and, and coerce people into taking the vaccine. So based on what you just mentioned, can we trust Pfizer and uh, Moderna to create a vaccine that is free from the eschatological destruction that is predicted in the Bible. Can we trust them? 
<laughs> that's, <laughs> Pastor, that's, a, that's a very interesting question. That's a very deep question. In fact, um, how would we answer that? Because th those two companies, they, they're just two of the many um, companies that are working on producing vaccine. We know these two. These are the two in the U.S. One came out for Cuba last week. Right. So, and um, you remember, the vaccine is not yet ready um, for for distribution because this, I um, can't remember the name of the board in the U.S. that it was the FDA, that has to approve it. So not being a medical person and, 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 and saying, yes, we can trust them, you know, I have to be careful because, first of all, I mean, they have been involved in producing vaccines. But, but can we trust them on this vaccine? Well, let's wait until the expert tells us, yes, the vaccine is good. But, um, but as it relates to, if, if, if the question is really saying, um, asking, um, can we trust these people to give us a vaccine that doesn't have anything to do with the mark of the beast, or can we trust them to give us a vaccine that would not in any way in t um, cause destruction? Uh, I'm trying to understand the question because that's what I'm getting from that pastor. I'm not sure if that's what the question is saying. Is that some persons are thinking that? They wonder about, shall I take this vaccine? Maybe next thing I take this vaccine. And, and really there are some properties in the vaccine or there is some chip in the vaccine or, or something of that nature that can lead me. Next thing I take the vaccine, I end up in hell because I end up with the mark of the beast. If that's what this is saying, that's what I'm saying. You know, if that's what this question is saying, I say it cannot happen. The mark of the beast cannot be given by a vaccine. The mark of the beast cannot be given by a, a a meal cannot be given by a medication. The mark of the beast cannot be given by a politician. The mark of the beast cannot be given by any religious leader. The, is the mark of the beast is one's, would be one's own decision to accept or follow a man-made system of worship, a false system of worship. So um, 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 how many times we are saying this? I think we have to say it again. The vaccine or any vaccine has nothing to do with the mark of the beast. The, if the promoters of it, the makers of it, think, because I'm not sure what's in the mind, Pastor, that we'll make this um, vaccine, and uh, on account of this vaccine, we shall give people the mark of the beast. They're, they're, they're wrong in their thinking, because they cannot, you cannot give someone the mark of the beast. You, the, the mark of the beast, suppose I don't want it, and you just come and hold me down and give me the mark of the beast. That means I'm, you send it straight to hell. If you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, so I if it's given to a vaccine, all you need to, I mean, I remember when we were growing up as little children, um, you had to take the, you know, a vaccine for polio, I think it is, and, and other things. And as children, you sc you're screaming in the, in the school, and the teachers hold you, and they give you the vaccine. Imagine you don't know, the, the Bible is saying, whoever has the mark of the beast will be condemned by God, condemned to the flames of hell. So you, you don't want the mark of the beast. Somebody ambush you, Pastor. That's all it that takes, you know. You don't want the mark of the beast, but somebody ambushes you, you are, and give you the mark of the beast, then you're condemned to hell. So <laughs> that's ridiculous. It's not going to happen. This is not the mark of the beast. Absolutely. Um, I, I totally agree with, with, with you, uh, Pastor. But I don't know why the, the two companies, um, Pfizer and Moderna, have been singled out. The question is, could you trust any one of them? If it's a, cost, a, if it's, um, a question of trust, then on what basis would you trust anyone? Um, if you can't trust Pfizer and Moderna, then who would you trust? So um, until you find something that is compelling why you shouldn't trust a company, then you have no reason um, not to. So Pfizer, Moderna, do we have clear, legitimate reasons to suspect that these companies are up to something untoward, something um, conspiratorial. If we have no evidence that they're up to anything like that, then we cannot go around and, and create false theories. On the other hand, is it possible that some powers that be, some powers that control sections of the pharmaceutical industry are tied to eugenics and population control? If the answer to those two questions are yes, then perhaps you need to be careful if there are such persons behind um, the scene creating viruses. 
if they philosophically expose eugenics population control. So that's something for you to investigate and find out. But as far as I am concerned, one cannot take a vaccine and uh, by so doing inadvertently take the mark of the beast. Well said, gentlemen. Just before we take a break, here Wilson Mans is saying, I agree, Pastor Isaac. I will not be taking any vaccines, but I am not deceived into thinking it had anything to do with the mark of the beast. For me, it's about health and science. Benda Nicola says, I trust them on no vaccine. Anthony Cyrus, the problem is not the vaccine, but the policy makers with regards to the mark of the beast. And uh, we have here, Anthony Cyrus is also saying, it's the same policy makers who will later be involved with enforcing the policies of worship. So Pastor Gordon's point speaks to that. It's in the same spirit. We take a break now, and we have a pro promotional video as to what the Pastor's Corner is all about. Welcome back. We are discussing a hot topic here. We are in the final segment. And uh, so far, our panelists have been doing very well in answering those questions that are posed to them. Um, we have two more questions here that we want to ask our panelists. Here it says, does abiding by the COVID-19 protocols aimed at protecting health and transmission of the virus, is it a defiance of the Ten Commandments or the Bible? Well, the Bible is very clear. And I, I, I do say that as Christians, particularly Seventh-day Adventists, we are very respectful of the political authority. In fact, if I may quickly say, when um, the USSR was dismantled. The Seventh Adventist Church was one of the first churches allowed in there. We actually did crusade in the very Kremlin because the KGB records showed that the Seventh Adventist Church has been very non-political. We have been respectful of political authorities. Um, while we don't support, of course, the oppression or whatever other aberrant act political administrations do, but we are respectful generally of um, political administrations. And we ought to, as Christians, conscientiously abide by all protocols that are designed for designing the interests of public health, public safety, public morals, save and accept when it violates the word of God. So we are acting in perfect harmony with the word when we comply with governmental restrictions that do not contravene the Bible. Wonderful. I, I, I like um, Pastor Gordon's response there. Once it does not contravene. And I think in our case here, um, for, for us in Grenada, I cannot say I, any of the protocols that have been um, developed, instituted so far here in Grenada, that it contravenes um, the Bible. Um, we were not singled out as worshippers, um, it was something across the board. COVID-19 restriction um, restricted business activity. It, it, it restricted attendance at school, um, sporting activities, I mean, leisure activities. 
um, church services. So he was not singled out against the church or church um, goers or worshipers. And then we are allowed to do every other thing. So um, in this sense, I say, no, we have to. I think, I mean, it's a legitimate question. It's question is a topical issue because many Christians um, here and, and around the world, you read um, social media, where persons believe that um, the, the protocols that have been, I mean, very, I must admit some of them are stringent and maybe in some cases even draconian, but it is aimed at public safety. I mean, one can argue um, sometimes they are overreaching and that kind of thing, but it's, aimed, it's always aimed at um, at, at safety. You know, Pastor, just this, this morning I was hearing um, BBC News that um, a number of the, the patriarchs in the Orthodox Church have passed because the bishop passed and the, those who did the funeral service went, conducted the funeral service without wearing masks and, and, and now they are contracted it. So I'm saying some persons and, and, and again some of our religious leaders are responsible for that. Um, who, who persons who have indicated to the worshippers um, that to give, to allow the government to put these rules in, in place and, and to abide by them, you're giving, I mean, you're, you're giving yourself to Satan, you're following Satan, which is not true, Pastor. This is about health and safety. That's right. when it, whenever it comes to the point oh, yeah. of uh, um, going against the, the, the word of God, then that's something else. That's right. Up until now, as a pastor, I cannot say here in Grenada, for instance, that any of those laws... Um, uh, in contravention to the, the, the laws of God. These are health laws, and I'm quite sure that's the way it is. Um, I'm quite sure, I mean, different parts of the world, politicians may use certain things to achieve certain things, and, and, and if you're there, in your neck of the woods, you'll have to interpret it. But generally speaking, I can say the coronavirus um, rules are for health and safety, public order, and, and that kind of thing. So I don't think this contravening the Bible in any way. Yeah. So finally... Pastors, from the whole experience of this COVID-19 virus, the pandemic and all that surrounds it, what lessons would you leave with our viewers today as to as it relates to their alertness and their readiness, especially for the end times and the second coming of Jesus? My response would be, we ought to wake up. No one can deny the fact that the coronavirus pandemic is of biblical proportions, prophetically speaking. It is one of those signs that clearly disambiguates the issue as to whether or not we're living in the end time. Yes, we are living in the end of time, and it behooves us, therefore, to be alert, to be sensitive, to be fasting and praying and getting closer to Jesus because we are living in the end time. Coronavirus shows us. It's a foretaste of what's coming. Earlier, Pastor Isaac quoted from Matthew 24 that the word pestilence means diseases and epidemics. And the Bible says that in the last days there would be pestilences. Please check. It's in the plural. Uh, the plural form, so which means that we can be on the lookout, there will be other things. But if you stay alert, stay close to the Lord, I kind of like Psalm 91, verse 1. May he that um, dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High sure. shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So if you stay close to the Lord, stay grounded, don't follow those persons who are saying, don't listen to the authorities because they are not Christians. We are Christians. We know better. We don't have to follow protocols, whatever. No, no, no. That's fanaticism. Let us be intelligent Christians. Let's stay close to the Lord. Let's learn from COVID-19. It shows us what governmental restrictions can be like and what lockdowns can be like. And when it gets to the point where... The, the regulations are not just going to be health-related, but related to worship. You will have seen from now what that can look like. So let's stay close to the Lord, and let's learn from this and stay alert. I would want to add, um, as Pastor Gordon said, and um, again share a scripture before I comment. Matthew 24, verse 42 and 44. Um, the word of God says, Watch therefore, for he knew not, what hour your Lord doth come. Therefore, be also ready, 
For in such an hour as they think not, the Son of Man cometh. COVID-19 um, gives us a panoramic view, as it were, as to what could be. Um, someone might say, what shall be? <laughs> you know, um, we, we saw almost worldwide, in a very short space of time, oh, everything changed. Something we couldn't imagine. If, if, if we try to imagine it before COVID-19, I'm not sure how we'll, you know, our minds will be able to wrap around it. But COVID-19 came, uh, and we, we, we noticed it not only in the Caribbean, not only in North America or in Asia, in, I mean, just worldwide. Ju it just came together, and the lockdowns came, and, and yes, we want to persons question government, but uh, as though government had the leeway because it was a health issue. So I'm saying, what can we learn? We see, we can learn how things can change in short order. As we normally repeat um, a phrase from one of my favorite authors, Ellen White, the final mom moments will be rapid ones. So at least we can learn that. It can happen quickly. And not that we, this has to take years to happen and, we, and, you know, and legislations and what have you. It just happened. Right? Um, so therefore, I think we have to, we have to learn from that. Um, and, and prepare ourselves. Be, the, the word of God says, be ye ready. Yes, so I think as Christians, we have to be ready. We know, we believe what the Bible um, prophecy says. In fact, I think, I think this issue about Pastor Guillaume, about the vaccine and, and, and the mark of the beast, is a prophetic distraction. The real issue is coming. So we, we are trying to divert um, from the real issue and, and talk about vaccine. It's not going to come to a vaccine. I'm, I'm repeating myself here. <laughs> it's not going to come. The mark of the beast has nothing to do with a vaccine. It has to do with individual choice of worship, of obeying God and not obeying God. Those who obey God will receive the seal of God. Those who disobey God and go to the contrary way of worship will receive the mark of the beast. So I think all this talk and hype about the vaccine and the mark of the beast is what I call prophetic distraction. So let us be ready. Let us be vigilant and, and stay ready and prepare our hearts for whatever comes. We know that we are on the side of Jesus. Oh, yes. All good things must come to an end. And I want to express heartfelt thanks to Pastor Enoch Isaac and Pastor Jerome Garden for the information they have shared today. I hope that it cleared up many of uh, your misconceptions and those false um, theories and ideations that are, you know, floating around. And I hope that as you receive the information that you will be able to share it with others. And feel free to share the link. This program will be rebroadcast um, later on this evening. So you can, you know, um, ask persons to, to log in and to view the program. Once again, I want to thank the viewers, all of you who um, join us today. I want to thank you in a special way for being a part of this wonderful program. I just want to encourage you to keep safe. This is a public health issue. So let us abide by the health, the protocols that have been set out. Let us keep ourselves safe. When we do that, it's not just us, but we are keeping each other safe and even our families. And let us remember that as we see those things are happening around us, remember it's a it's, it's just a sign that very soon, very soon, Jesus will come. And my encouragement to you is to be ready and stay ready until that day. May God richly bless you. Let us pray. Pastor. Pray Let's pray. Us. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to share the word of God in this medium today. Um, this very important topic, the mark of the base, and also linking it with coronavirus. We thank you for the information which was shared. And Lord, help us to seek to further clarify in the minds of your people what exactly is the mark of the base and how one can go down that, that road. Help us, of course, to make wise choices. Help all our listeners and our viewers to make wise choices and to choose the seal of God um, rather than the mark of the base. Bless our meeting and our, um, this program as we continue to um, view this program. 
um, next Tuesday again. Into your hands we commit ourselves now, we pray in Jesus' name.